Maritime Admiralty Law Words, all water-related. I've never taken a course on law, so let me point that out, other than communications law when I was in college. I have no background in law. But I did see this video by Jordan Maxwell. He was being interviewed, I think, by InfoWars. And I had been reading parts of Redemption Manual 4.5. Someone had recommended it to me. It's quite a fascinating book if you've never encountered the information that was in it like I had not before. And then I was looking up birth certificate, straw man, and other things, and I stumbled upon this Jordan Maxwell interview. And in the video, he demonstrates or explains how humans are processed like products that are shipped in and received at ports, and that the language is all related to water, maritime, admiralty law words. So it was quite interesting because I had never learned of this, and these are the notes I took. So I didn't come up with any of this research. All I did was take notes on what Jordan Maxwell had said. So if you want to go straight to the source, find that Jordan Maxwell interview. It was so long ago, I don't even remember the name of the video. Your body is a corporation, a company. Dead body equals corpse. What? You know, that had never dawned on me that corpse is short for corporation. So your dead body is a corpse. International maritime admiralty law is the law of money, corporation, law of the sea. I remember a long time ago, I don't remember how many years ago, but the Law of the Seas Treaty was being modified or something. It was a big deal. I didn't quite understand it at the time. Still don't, but now I realize how big of a deal it is. If I remember correctly, the acronym was LOST, Law of Seas Treaty. Your body is being bought and sold on the New York Stock Exchange. (laughs) There's a couple of videos out there that I've seen online, and it says that if you look at the back of your birth certificate, there's like a number on it. I don't know if it was Canadian or United States, but they're saying that that number, like banks trade your birth certificate. And like, if you go get the actual birth certificate, you'll see all these different stamps from banks on the back. And that there was like some website that you could type in the number of the birth certificate and see how much the mutual fund of everybody that's in your, I guess it was like your zip code or something like zip codes of people are being traded. Who knows? I I haven't found any proof of it, but what a claim that is, right? And I was reading some book that said that American labor is the collateral for the loans that we have for the national debt. And the birth certificate is like the bond. And then there's others that say your signature or your, your, when you redeem your straw man, you place a lien against your straw man for like $10 million. I'm not really sure how it all works, but it's interesting to try to read about, figure out what's going on, and that your signature is very powerful. And, and basically, all you have to do is sign for things because the U.S. Treasury like owes you back money. I'm not sure, but I'm I, and I'm presenting this for other people to investigate and look up and learn about, just for an intellectual exercise. Because at the at, at a minimum, it's entertaining to read about this stuff. Your body is over seventy percent water. Hence, you are a maritime water product. Your body is a biological battery, an electrical unit. And that reminded me of The Matrix when Morpheus says, in order to turn you into this, and it was a battery. A license is an agreement, permit to do something that without license would be unlawful. Anything you do is called business by law. Anything you do must have a license, a business license. So hence, a marriage license is one business to do business with another business. And it's kind of proven that, you know, to get married, you have to get a marriage license. And that's, and if you are a business, you're creating, and it's basically a legal, it's literally a legal agreement. You know, sometimes you hear people that aren't fond of marriage saying it's just a legal piece of paper but it's actually i guess a a business partnership you have to have a marriage license and a license is an agreement permit to do something that without the license would be unlawful it's interesting like these these terms when you think about it on this level it's like wow okay interesting docking at the port when a ship pulls into a harbor with 800 million dollars worth of cars business it comes in on water When the ship comes in, it parks at the dock. And then Maxwell was talking. He's like, look, everything is a ship, a citizenship, sportsmanship, scholarship, 
dealership, courtship, citizen on board ship, I guess is what citizenship is short for. But I had never really, you know, it never dawned on me that all these things ended in ship. Shipping and manufacturing, where a ship sits in harbor, is called berth. All ships are she. When items come off a ship, they are born. She delivers the product. The man manufactures. The woman delivers the product. When you have been manufactured and she delivers the product, you are the product of a corporation. You are the joint new product of two corporations. Anything those two co companies produce, the product belongs to them, not you. Any item coming off that ship has to have a certificate of manifest. So this is describing products, how they come aboard land. But it's also, Maxwell's trying to say, you know, realize that you, you, your mom gave birth to you from the birth canal. Canal is a water word as well. And then when you're born, they measure you. They give you a birth certificate. That's the certificate of manifest. All your vitals are taken. You're essentially treated like a product. And the certificate of manifest, the, the birth certificate, is also the FOB, the free on board, where the ownership exchanged hands from your mom to the state. Each car has to be represented with paperwork and information about each item. It's real interesting when you think about this. You feel like a real product now. You're like, wow, I'm a, I'm a corporation. My straw man is my legal paper that incorporated me, well, my straw man into existence. And they're saying that your corporate, the corporation that's you is always written in all capital letters. And that's how you differentiate the real you between the corporation you, the straw man. And I apologize for sounding like not on point with my information. I read this stuff years ago and I'm, I was cleaning out a folder and I found these notes and I'm like, let me make a video about this based on my notes. So these are the notes. And you know, why just let them die in that folder and delete it, right? So shipping continued. When you're born, you have a birth certificate with vital signs for product. You are a human resource. You are going to be bought and sold by the international banks in New York and London. You are a security, policy, police, politician. That never had dawned on me either. So the politicians create policies and the police police the policies. I never saw that policy, police, and politician were three words that were all related. Never dawned on me. The Styles Style Manual is the U.S. Government Printing Office Style Manual. It tells you what the words mean correctly. It has the words to use. So Maxwell was saying to get your hands on the U.S. Government Printing Office Style Manual. I had looked it up at the time that I had seen that video, and nothing really stood out to me. So I, I wish Maxwell would have spelled that out. Sometimes I'm really naive, and I don't... Like a lot of times people tell jokes and I don't get it until it's spelled out. I'm one of those people that has to have it spelled out. Sorry, but I don't know. I'm just a naive, young, innocent kid. 1871 formed a corporation after the Civil War, the United States Corporation. Anybody who worked for the corporation is a member of the corporation. If you are a U.S. citizen and they ask you if you are a U.S. citizen, are you lawfully in America to do business? A lien is alien and that never dawned on me either so when they ask he's saying so when they ask are you testifying that you are a u.s citizen you are saying i am an employee and then you're under the company policy not the law of the land and the law of the land is referring to common law as opposed to statutory law so the premise of the whole sovereignty movement is that we're all living under statutory law but we weren't told and that the people say that they should be bound to common law and that supposedly if you write UCC 1-308 it's it's you res and without prejudice or under protest uh, it, it basically retains 
then he writes, you unknowingly or under false pretense agreed to surrender. So, yeah, supposedly you're supposed to write UCC 1-308. I, I, I don't know what it really means, so I'm not going to write it down until I fully understand it. But that's a term. So, like, one of the points of making this video is I'm giving you neat terms and things to look up that once you go down this path, you're going to find all this info that you, I had never known about. And chances are some of you might not have known about either. The And so I think they were saying statutory law became law in 1938. And as far as the 1871 thing, if you Google February 21st, 1871, supposedly that's when we all stopped being state citizens and became federal citizens. Or it was the day the United States became a corporation. It's neat. Just just go to Google and type in February 21, 1871, and you, you'll see all kinds of results that you're like, wow, look at all these look at all these titles here. This is this is really interesting. And I think that's also the day that Washington DC became Washington DC, the capital of the United States. Liberty. So Maxwell differentiates between liberty and freedom. So the Statue of Liberty is not the Statue of Freedom, it's the Statue of Liberty. Liberty is what a sailor gets when he pulls in a port and asks permission to go on land. If you get permission to go out, you have liberty. In America, you have liberty. You ask permission, you get a permit, you have a license. So we do not necessarily have freedom, we have liberty. And that's a whole new thing. I, you know, liberty and freedom. I think most of us thought it was synonymous, but apparently they mean different things. Court. This one's interesting. Court. Basketball court. Tennis court. Court is a game. Like tennis, two teams of lawyers. They want to put the ball back in the other guy's court. They volley to each other. The judge is the referee or the umpire. There is a gate and a fence. The gate represents a water gate. When the gate opens, the water raises the ship up. When you put your hand on the gate, you open the floodgate. When they call your name and you open the water gate, you are in hot water. Someone has to bail you out. The judge, and, and bail you out, bail is a water term. The judge rules from a bench. Bench means bank in Latin. So the judge rules from the bench or the bank. The judge sits higher up looking down on you. You look up to the bank, the bench. So that's kind of like in tennis too. The, the ref sometimes or the umpire is, is sitting higher up. So court is a game. <laughs> I mean, it's not a game for most people. And they were saying that uh, there, there's like all kinds of stuff online that tells you how to behave in court and what and what not to do, and uh, and now I understand why you want to why it's good to have a lawyer because he knows the rules of the game because court is a game and you may or may not know the rules of the game. So all these words for court relate to water, the water gate, bail you out, and then the judge being the bank representing the bank so because it's statutory law i guess they're all terms of money like all court cases are based on statutory law and and where the money gets compensated again i'm not a pro at this law but if the judge is the banker it makes a lot more sense the matrix mr anderson is your straw man fiction neo is your flesh and blood self and you have the agents and then you see the water and the fluid in the matrix. And obviously that also has like baptismal aspects. But uh, it's been suggested that the matrix is a movie about maritime admiralty law and straw man redemption and sovereignty. I always thought it was about, you know, like the world being pulled over your eyes, uh, that reality is not real. But when I read the passage, I think it was in Redemption Manual 4.5, like their review of the matrix 1, 2, and 3 are really good reviews and they also do a review like on how it relates to law and they also do a review of uh the wizard of oz and you know you've seen others do the reviews like the real meanings behind all the characters and everything but i've never seen it quite presented like it was in this 
So it's saying that Toto means all. So and the lady, the wicked witch, or the lady next door wanted Toto, which meant she wanted everything. There was the Tin Man, and the Tin was an acronym for tax identification number. Emerald City represented money, but you follow the yellow brick road, the gold, to get there. And that uh, the original version, Dorothy's slippers were made of silver, but in the movie they were ruby. Uh, the lion and the straw man. Look at that. So there's a straw man in there. And the lion needs his courage. So so if you get a chance, to, if you because this book, Redemption Manual, it's like over $100. I think they're on like version 5.0 now. So if you, you know, I mean, if you want to buy the book, it's probably interesting to buy. I think the price is a little bit high, but if you consider it legal advice, it's actually really affordable. Or if you could find it online somewhere to read. But I, I guarantee you, you're going to see something. Like, as a conspiracy theorist right now, I'm always out to look for the next new thing that I haven't heard of. Because at some point, you begin to hear of everything. And when I found this book, it opened up a whole new world that I never knew existed. So, and especially seeing their perspective of the Matrix and Wizard of Oz, these angles I had never considered before. And now everything becomes different to me. As you know, last year I read The White Book. While most think The White Book is about Tupac, it was kind of about magic with a K, conspiracy theory. And I got a real good primer into magic and witchcraft uh, just basic, like high level, you know, nothing deep. But after reading the white book and then thinking back on the redemption manual and all the stuff about the court with the lawyers, I started to wonder, I'm like, are lawyers magicians? They evoke law. They cast spells and repudiate them. I object. The judge wears the robe. You got the Black's Law Dictionary is like their book of spells. It's a Hadouken fight of casting spells at each other until the other doesn't have a volley to return. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it's like, yeah, of course, you didn't know that. But I didn't. I didn't know that. But after reading the white book and thinking back on this stuff, I, I wonder, are the lawyers magicians? And it's like, you need to get, some, you need to get a magician to represent you in court because you don't know the craft. <laughs> You know, back when I had initially read this stuff, I could have quoted it a lot better. Right now, I'm a little bit under the weather. I've been traveling. I'm going to travel next week. I just wanted to rock a video this week. I know my voice is a little boring, but, you know, something something for people to think about while I'm gone. You know, and speaking of traveling, they're saying, don't call yourself a driver. Call yourself a traveler. Because a driver is a legal term in their law world. Whereas a traveler... I think is like a common law term. And as I said, I'm really not qualified to even speak on this. This is this video's intent is to just give you things to look up, not legal advice. Uh, and don't even take what I'm saying as accurate. I'm just giving you neat things to look up to get it from more authoritative sources. I am not authoritative in this. So if you want to investigate further, on Amazon, they sell Redemption Manual 5.0. I'll put a link in the description. Like I said, it's an expensive book. And then you also, I think, have to buy this like accompanying book that has all the paperwork. You can look up videos by Jordan Maxwell. You might even find the video that I'm referring to that I took notes on all that time ago. If you've never seen The Matrix, you should watch it. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine anybody not seeing it. It's like Star Wars. You're like, wow, you never seen Star Wars? You never saw The Matrix? And if you've seen The Matrix, you might want to watch it again with this new idea of looking at it as a movie about law, like an analogy for law, straw man. There's a video on YouTube. I'll also uh, paste the link for this. It's called Meet Your Straw Man. I'll also try to find that Jordan Maxwell link, and I'll paste that in too. But the Meet Your Straw Man cartoon, it's a real interesting five-minute cartoon you might want to watch. It... Uh, it gives you a primer into something that we all might be missing out on. The sovereignty movement, there's a lot of information out there on that. I, I think I initially learned about it from either the movie Chimatica or the guy that narrated Chimatica. He made another movie or he narrated another documentary. It was one of the two of those that 
I got the lead. I never heard of the sovereignty movement until I saw that documentary. Secured party creditor. There might be something really in there if, if you look up secured party creditor. It's kind of hard to get the info. You just you just get people that want to sell you the idea of learning about secured party creditor, but I was never able to fully figure out what that really means. I read the book by Mary Croft. It was somewhat interesting at the beginning, and then it kind of like tailed off. But uh, her, she had a couple of good interviews where she's got some pretty interesting claims, and she fights the banks and enjoys doing it. I wouldn't enjoy doing what she does, but she does. And if you're into that, check her out. Again, doing some of this stuff, you might end up in jail. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video whenever I get back. Thank you.